This is part four of a series on the RSA encryption algorithm, Intro to Encrypting and Decrypting Secret Messages. Once again, we're going to start off with our list of things to remember. I've attached um, the previous lists of things to remember right here, if you'd like to take a look at it again. But we're also going to be adding some new things to this list that we covered in the last video. So some other stuff that you have to remember is this inequality that we use to find e. e must be greater than 1 but less than phi n, and e cannot share any common factors with the value of phi n. You also have to remember the equation that we used to find d. So the quantity e times d mod phi n has to equal 1. You should also remember that mod outputs the remainder of a division, and that the second trapdoor one-way function, that the second utilization of a second tra of a trapdoor one-way function, is found when we're calculating d. So in this equation, e times d mod phi n equals one. It's easy for the key generator to compute the value of d because they have access to the public key value as e but also the private key value of phi n. So it's easy for them to find d because they're only solving for one variable. However, it's hard for anybody else because even though they do have access to the public key value of e, they don't have access to the private key value of phi n. So it's, harder, it's hard for them to calculate d given that they don't have the private key value of phi n. So they're stuck trying to factor n to find its factors p and q to be able to find phi n to be able to find d, which we're going to see in just a few minutes is used to decrypt messages. So today we're going to talk about how the values that we've generated in the last two videos, how these values are going to be used to encrypt and decrypt secret messages. We're going to have to keep the roles of the key generator and the sender especially in mind, Again, the sender is the one, I'm sorry, the key generator is the one who has generated all six of these values. He'll release the values of n, of n and e to the general public, including the sender, but he'll keep the values of p, q, phi, n, and d private to himself. Then the sender will use the values of n and e to encrypt his message. And then the key generator will use the value of d to decrypt it. We're going to see how right now. So first we're going to talk about encrypting secret messages. So n and e are the two values that the sender has to work with, since they're the only two public key values and the sender only has access to public key values. So the sender is going to use these values to encrypt his secret message. We'll call this message that he's going to encrypt M. So M represents a secret message and will have a numerical integer value that the sender picks. So let's say that the sender wants to send a secret message of hi to the key generator. He would translate these letters H and I to numbers. Now since H is the eighth letter of the alphabet and I is the ninth letter of the alphabet, the message hi can be translated to the numerical value of 89. It's important to note that this isn't the only way that you can do this, translating the letters H and I into numbers, but it's certainly the easiest way. So 89 is what we're going to say the sender's secret message is. Now, to encrypt the message 89, the sender has to plug it into this expression, m to the e mod n. This is the expression that is used to encrypt messages in RSA encryption. Note how the only values required are the two public key values of e and n. So in our example, we said that n was 3,233, e was 7, 
and m was 89, so let's plug it into this equation. Sorry, expression. So m is 89 raised to the 7th power mod 3233. This comes out to be 206. So 206 is the sender's encrypted message. So the sender will send this encrypted message of 206 to the key generator. So now let's talk about how the key generator will decrypt the secret message of 206. So the key generator wants to decrypt the secret message of 206. Now since he's the key generator, he has all of these values to work with to be able to decrypt this message 206. But he's really only going to use the value, uh, the values of D and N to decrypt the message 206. Let's call this message of 206 C. So the key generator is going to plug in this encrypted message C into this expression. C to the D power mod N. This is the expression that is used to decrypt messages in RSA encryption. Note how one of the required values, D, is a private key value, which ensures that only the key generator, who is the only one who has access to the private key values, is the only one who can decrypt messages. So in our example, C is 206, D is 1,783, and N is 3,233. So this expression, 206 to the 1,783 power mod 3,233, simplifies to 89. And just like that, the key generator has decrypted the sender's encrypted message and got the original message of 89, or hi, that the sender was trying to send. So that's it for this series. We've seen how the sender will encrypt his message using public key values and how the key generator will decrypt this message using the private key value of D. Thanks so much for listening.